So I'm gonna show you guys how to build the double key tree, which is a curved keyboard stand designed to hold an 88 key keyboard. Um, so let's, let's walk through the parts that we have to build this thing with. So starting from the smallest bar to the longest, I have three 20 inch straight bars, I have three 24 inch curved bars, then I have two 36 inch straight bars, and then also two curved 36 inch bars. Uh, for clamps, I'm using seven T clamps, which is the SC GCRQT. I'm using five right angle clamps, which is the SC GCRA. Um, I'm also using a, a number of memory locks to lock everything in place. Um, for, the, for the feet, I'm using two uh, SCRF, which are the rubber rack feet that go on the end of the, uh, the, the main T leg assembly. And then I'm using two of the small rubber round feet, which is the SCRFR. Um, then also to actually lay the keyboards down on top of the rig, I have two pairs of the SCGEMC, which they come in pairs. Um, so to build this rig, uh, two of the tools that you'll need um, are a level and a drum key. You have to have a drum key. So let's start by building the front long T-leg assembly. I'm going to take my 36 inch bar and I'm going to take two T-clamps. Now I already have uh, memory locks positioned on these bars, uh, on most of them, uh, so I could speed up the process just a little bit to show you guys how this thing goes together. Um, but you'll have to you'll have to maneuver them around as you as you build, um, so that you can get all the bars to fit together. So first, I'm going to take my T-clamp and I'm going to place it on the bar. Okay, so. I already have these memory locks on here, which makes it easy for me to slide the clamps and exact slide the clamps on, lock them into place, and know exactly where I have to position the position the clamp. But what you need to do is you need to figure out exactly how far apart these clamps need to be. And um, the way the way the one of the ways that I do it is I take my 20 inch bar, since this is going to be um, the distance that, that that these vertical bars are apart, I'm going to place it right in front of this clamp and I'm going to eyeball it to my to my best ability you'll you'll end up modifying it sliding it in as you as you build it but I line it up to where the actual outside of each bar is going to be and that's where I I, uh, I line the clamps up to so now I'm going to put the rubber rack feet right over the end Okay, so what you're going to need to make sure is that these both these clamps are facing up and they're level going up. Um, and that sometimes hard to do just by eyeballing it, but eyeball it the best you can. And then when you start adding the vertical bars and you add the tops, uh, the lower the lower cross support, you'll you'll see how it, it it'll line itself up. So you don't want to completely tighten these clamps until um, until you know that they're they're exactly in the right position once you get the two verticals on. So now I have the T-leg assembly made. Now I'm going to take my 36 inch curve and I'm going to place it in the T-clamp. So once again, I have the memory lock already positioned, but this is where this is the kicker where you start uh, working with curved bars. Um, it can be difficult sometimes getting this getting this uh, this bar straight on vertical to where it's where it, the, the bow is completely going out this way as if there's an imaginary wall right here. So um, you, have to, you have to maneuver it around a little bit and eyeball it to the best of your ability. Then once you start adding the top part to it, it'll help straighten it out. And I'll show you some other, uh, another way of making sure that these bars are perfectly parallel going vertical. Now let's do the second T-leg. So now I've got my two verticals. As you can see, it, it moves just a little bit. So now I want to add my top crossbar and this will help me to make sure that these bars aren't torqued either out or in. So I'm going to need another T-clamp on the top of this bar. So now I'm going to take the, the, next, the, the second 36 inch bar and I'm going to place it right in these top clamps.
when these clamps are still a little bit loose, you'll start to see um, they'll start to they'll start to um, the bar will start to form just a little bit just to fit in these clamps because if this bar is torqued this way or this way, they will not fit perfectly in these clamps the way that the way that I have this here. So this will help you get these bar these vertical bars straight. Okay, so the next step is I want to add um, I want to add my cross support, which is actually going to be the support for my second tier. Um, the reason I'm going to do this next is because this will solidify whether or not these bars are torqued, and I'll show you. So I'm going to take a right angle clamp. And I'm going to place it inside the right angle clamps. So now, here's where you test to see if these bars are either perfectly parallel or if one of them is torqued one way or another. You loosen this, these back clamps like this, these right angle clamps, enough to where it slides freely, and then you just slide it up and down the pole. If it slides up and down the pole, the, uh, these two poles evenly without grabbing, then your bars are pretty much in alignment. So one thing that I, for, uh, I wanted to mention about memory locks is you need to count the clamps that, are on, that you're going to be putting on each bar because that's the amount of memory locks you need to put on. And make sure you put that, those memory locks on first and, uh, and, um, and position them as you go because uh, you don't want to have to find out that you've got to pull your stand apart to add a, to add a memory lock to it. It gets, it gets uh, to be a big PIA if you have to do that. So now um, I've got four memory locks here and you'll see the reason that I have, have these memory locks on here. Otherwise, you wouldn't really need a memory lock because you're just lining, um, you're lining these tubes up, these verticals up to where it's flush on either end. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the, 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 back, uh, the back support legs for each, uh, each vertical. To do that, I'm gonna need another T-clamp. And I'm going to position it right here on this back bar, on this, this front vertical bar facing towards me. This is why this right here is key to having this bar being perfectly parallel with each other, these two bars perfectly parallel. Because if you don't, then whenever you have your back support legs, it's going to kick one of your support legs off to the left or to the right. And it's not going to affect your stability, but it might affect your psyche. With me, I have to have everything perfectly balanced and level. Take another, another uh, T-clamp, and we're going to add it to this leg right here. Okay, so now I'm eyeballing the two, the two uh, clamps. They look pretty straight to me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the, uh, the 24 inch curve bar and I'm going to apply them to both verticals like this. So now it has a support leg to go like this. And I will need these two rubber rack feet. And we'll place them right over the end of the bar. Okay, so take this, place it right inside the T-clamp, and now you have a support leg, and it'll stand up at least while you can attach the other one. Add the second one. Now to make sure that this is these are these two are level, these two are at the same height, um, you can use a measuring tape. To, uh, to make sure you've got the uh, the clamp position at the same height on each bar, or you can eyeball it. But the once you once you get the crossbar on here to support these two legs, uh, the level will will tell you whether or not you have um, have the clamps at the same height. So now I'm going to add the back support leg, the support bar. So I need two right angle clamps and a 20 inch straight bar. And I position it up a little bit like this so it angles up so you can just slide the, you can just slide the other clamp on and, and uh, 
and lay it down right in the clamp. Let's do this. So you've got one clamp on, add the bar, make sure it's flush to the end. Now add your second clamp to the crossbar and then turn it. Now this will tell you if you have every, if you have this clamp pitched uh, pitched in the right um, on the uh, directly off of this of this bar correctly if it's straight in line versus being torqued left or right because if it's if it's if it's torqued left or right you're gonna have um, some some leftover uh, bar at the end of this clamp like I do here so I realize I need to move this clamp out this leg out a little bit so it gives me a little bit more. Um, so it goes towards the end. Okay, so now I'm gonna slide this. You can position this anywhere you want. Um, it's kind of arbit it's arbitrary as to where it needs to be. You can just it's just whatever makes makes you feel comfortable. I'm gonna slide it down to where I have my memory locks. And this is another another telltale sign if it's if these bars are torqued or if they're straight if this bar slides up and down easily. You need to make sure the clamps are loose enough to slide first. So now that we have the uh, the basic frame of the first tier set up, you can take your level and place it on the crossbar and I see that it's absolutely perfectly level and uh, you take your level put it on the top crossbar and I can see that it's perfectly level there now if we want to measure the middle crossbar too we do the same thing but it's all gonna read the same thing it's all gonna read the same level if these two bars are level so now it's time to add the second tier to do that I'm gonna need a right angle clamp and a T clamp so I position the right angle clamp to where the uh, the remaining, the empty side of the clamp is facing me, facing the player. Then I'm going to take my 24 inch curved bar and I'm going to place it to where it's curving away from me, right into the right in right in here, into the uh, the empty side of the clamp. So now, all that's left to do is just to add the top T, uh, T crossbar for the for the second tier keyboard. To do that, I'm gonna take my remaining T clamp and place it right over the end of this bar. Okay, so. Now that we have now that we have our second tier bar uh, framework attached already, we need to um, make sure that we memory lock this clamp right down here, so that if you're using a really heavy keyboard, um, you don't have to worry about this about this uh, the vertical bar twisting on this on this crossbar right here. So take a take a memory lock, put it to the left side of the clamp, then also take another memory lock and put it to the other side of the clamp. Now you've completely removed any possibility that the clamp is gonna slip and your second tier keyboard is gonna slip a little bit. So now that the, uh, the frame is built, all I need to do is add my um, keyboard mounting arms and then it's done. Okay, so I noticed that the keyboard, the keyboard arms that I put here, may not this this second tier stem may be too close to where it hits the back of the keyboard. So all I have to do is rotate this bar back just a little bit, and then I have plenty of space 
for my first tier keyboard. So now we have a completed double key tree stand. Now keep in mind that when you're first initially setting this up, because you're using curved bars, there are a lot more variables and angles than there are with straight, so it's going to take a little bit more time. You just have to have a little more patience than you do with, with straight bars. But as long as you memory lock everything, once you do, it's going to go together the same way every single time, and you'll be able to get this thing set up in under two to three minutes.